Hey guys, welcome to another server minor plugin tutorial. I'm your host LTGym007 and today we're looking at Thizzy's Tree Fella plugin. Now this is a really awesome plugin that is highly customizable. It has a really cool GUI that makes tweaking things easy. You can either change the config in the GUI or simply go into the actual config in your server folder. Um, but we are going to show you what it does and how to use it today. So the cool thing about this is it add effects when you chop a tree down, so like in real life, if you were to hit the bottom of a tree, it will collapse entirely, and then you can set a ton of different options and requirements for what the tool has to be and what the tree does and all that good stuff. So the first thing we can do is show you what happens in creative mode, which is absolutely nothing. If you do the command forward slash tree fella, that is going to show you all the commands. There's not too many of them, but if we do the debug command, that is going to turn on the debug mode. So now if I try and destroy a tree, it's going to check loads of different things and tell you if there is a particular problem with something you've set up or why it's not working. And you can see clearly here, um, the tools and trees are fine, but the problem is I am in creative mode. So if I go into survival mode and then try the same thing, we are going to have success. So the tree is going to fall down. You can see because we're in debug mode, it checks all of this good stuff. Um, it's low enough, has enough logs. And that's something you can change in the config file. How many logs does it have to have to be a tree and to be cut down? How many leaves does it have to have? Tons of stuff like that, it's really in depth. And you can see this one ticks all the boxes and will be cut down. Now, if you obviously don't want that uh, showing, you can just do the debug command again. And then when you chop down the tree, it's not going to tell you any of that, which is obviously good. And then obviously you can turn the tree fella plugin off and on if for some reason you don't want that to happen. And then the tree will act as normal. And obviously we can switch it back on as well. So if you change anything in the config file, you can do the reload command. But the most important one is the config command. Now this is really cool. It gives you a very well-made GUI that will have all the options which are in the config file. So there's a few things in here we can change. So let's start at the global um, config options. So there's a ton of things here. Um, so if we start at the top, um, we can have a look at a few different things. So is it enabled by default? Yes or no. And if you click the option, then you can select false or true. And then the paper on the left is going to indicate the current value. We can go back. And then up here, we have the required logs and required leaves. So you can click this and then you can set it to zero or set it to one and click that a few times to get it to three or to five and then you can go back and now it's only five required leaves instead of ten max logs max height so these ensure that you don't have a really crazy tree that's custom built that will cause lag to the server and then you have the vertical fall velocity how quick do you want the tree to fall and then the directional fall velocity so you can see there's absolutely a ton of things that you can um, customize in here. Obviously most of this you probably don't want to edit, it's already set up pretty well and it uh, looks good. Do you want to leave a tree stump? Yes or no? So we can turn that on, set to true and then hit back and then hopefully if we go to a tree and destroy a block there is a tree stump left and there we go. So that's the kind of thing you can do with that global one. If we destroy this the tree stump is left. So going back into the config file we can go into the tools. Now there's a few different tools we have here. These are the ones you have by default. And what you can do is simply click on one and then it will give you specific uh, setups for each tool. So up at the top, we have stuff like the scan distance, the leaf detect range, required logs, required leaves. So either you can use the global one, which is why it says null, or you can set it custom, custom for each tool. If you go back, you can create a new tool. So in this case, I want the golden axe with unbreaking. So pop that in there and then hit select. And then while we're here, we can go down to required enchantments. So tools must have these enchantments at this level or higher to fell trees. And then you can have, where is it? Unbreaking one, click that, go back. And now unbreaking one is required. And then you can do stuff like change the max log. So in this case, we might need 10 logs to use this particular tool. And then you could change various other things in here if you wanted to. Um, but obviously not required to. And then obviously you have another tool here in the config. 
Over here we have all the different trees, so you could add a new tree, you could detect a tree if you made a custom one, and then if you click on one you've got all of these um, same options for the global um, that you can change per tree if you really wanted to, but you honestly don't need to do that. Messages is very straightforward, so when you do a certain thing, so um, checking what are the messages going to say, um, and obviously you could change this if you wanted to, uh, like the max height message, what is that going to say? But I wouldn't recommend changing them in here. I would go into the config actually and uh, tweak them in there. And then you can set certain effects. So if you hit new effect and then you wanted a new particle effect, for example, you could select that. And then the location. So do you want it on the leaves, the tree, the tool itself, or on the logs? Um, and then you could select the chance that it's going to happen. So one. Or you could increase the or decrease the chance, I should say. So 96%. And then you can change the X, Y, Z coordinates of that, and then the speed and the count. And that is how you could create a particle effect. And there it is, our new effect. And if we go back, we could then hit save configuration, and that will save it in the config file. So that is a quick look in-game of how you could change all these different config values and whatnot. Um, but that is how the plugin works. As you can see, it's a very cool plugin and works very, very well. Let's head over to the config file now and see what we can change in there. So here we are in the SMPitnik control panel and as you can see there is a single config.yml. So if we open this up we will see all the same stuff that we could change in game. So we have all of these different values and tree stumps and all that good stuff that you could tweak in here if you wanted to, XP. Uh, if we scroll down to the bottom we have all the different trees and the max saplings etc. These are all stuff you can change in game. Um, and then we've got all of the messages that we saw in game. What is it going to say when a certain thing happens, like tool is disabled or you're in creative mode, etc. So honestly, you don't really need to change this. Up at the top, we have obviously the global value, so max logs, required leaves, etc. Um, so feel free to change that if you want, but it's pretty good how it is by default. So here we are on the speaker page. You can see it's updated to 1.18, and then we have some nice GIFs indicating how it works and what it does, which is pretty awesome. Uh, there's the in-game debug tool which is very useful there is the config file and there is it working with particle effects and explosion so you can really customize it make it very very cool um, and it's compatible with a ton of other plugins as well so highly recommend it very cool plugin but if you need a server to host it on check out serverminer.com for the best and cheapest hosting around but that's it for me subscribe like comment and i'll see you next time